That day, I must have been utterly exhausted. After putting my daughter Nia to bed in her crib, I headed to my bedroom and fell asleep instantly. A few hours later, I was abruptly woken by Nicholas crying in the night. Still half asleep, I checked the time on my phone. One o'clock a.m. Good thing I got a little nap earlier, I thought, dragging my tired body up, planning to go to the living room to soothe Nia. Just then, I heard a shouting voice, Shut up! Be quiet! For a moment, I couldn't tell where the voice was coming from. I thought maybe my mother-in-law Jamie was yelling from her room, so I said, Yes, I'm coming to soothe her now, and opened the living room door. There right in front of me was Jamie, standing over the crib, glaring at Nia. The next moment, she slapped Nia's face, shouting, Enough already. What are you doing? I yelled louder than I ever had before. Jamie looked surprised for a second, then yelled back, Why didn't you soothe her sooner? This child is so noisy. Panicking, I rushed over to the crib and lifted Nia to protect her from Jamie. I couldn't believe it, hitting a baby. My name is Candiff, a 28-year-old housewife. I used to be an office worker, but I'm currently on maternity leave, focusing on housework and child care. My husband Miles and I started living with Jamie, my mother-in-law, about a year ago. Miles's job is demanding, and he's rarely home. He was worried about leaving me alone while I was pregnant and felt sorry for Jamie being alone since my father-in-law Willis passed away two years ago, so we decided to move in with her. At first, living together went well, but gradually Jamie started showing her true colors, and honestly, I was having a hard time. Candy, you're really slow at housework, aren't you? Can't you make better food? Jamie harassed me every chance she got. When Willis was still alive, I didn't have any issues when visiting my in-law's house, so I didn't particularly dislike Jamie back then. However, after Willis passed away and we started living together, Jamie became an unbearably selfish and rude presence in my life. Hurry up with the housework, you're really useless, you know, slow and ugly. Jamie kept insulting me like this. The last part was just mean and had nothing to do with housework. Since I was pregnant, it was natural for me to be slow with chores. But Jamie didn't seem to care. She just seemed desperate to harass me. As for Miles, he's mostly away on business trips and doesn't get home until midnight, even when he's not traveling, so I have to spend most of my days with Jamie. I kept hoping that things would change since the baby was born. Even Jamie, rough as she is, would surely become kinder and gentler living with her grandchild. I was desperately holding on to that hope. I did consult Miles about it on WhatsApp, keeping it to a level that wouldn't trouble his work, and he replied with, I'm really sorry. I wish I could be there for you during tough times. He also takes care to admonish Jamie when they meet. Knowing that Miles is on my side gives me a little relief. That's why I could bear being scolded by Jamie for not doing the housework well enough while pregnant. Later, I safely gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Miles, blessed him managed to get permission from his company, saying the baby is being born, and left work early, rushing to the hospital just before I gave birth. When he held our newborn daughter, he looked so happy and said, she's really cute, like an angel. I was happy too, having given birth to the child of the man I love. I reported the birth of our healthy baby girl to Jamie through WhatsApp. Since we lived together, I thought she might come to visit us in the hospital, but Jamie didn't show up. She didn't even reply on WhatsApp. Could it be that she's not interested in her granddaughter? I started to feel a cold sweat. Will this harassment continue even now? As I was dreading that thought, the door to my hospital room opened. Candiff, how are you feeling? Wow, what a cute baby. It's a girl, right? She's going to be beautiful. It was my sister-in-law, Leela, who came to visit. Leela is very kind and cheerful, and she's always been good to me. I've always loved Leela. She's already married and has children, so I had decided to consult her about parenting. What's her name? Miles and I decided to name her Nia. Oh, that's a nice name. Wait, hasn't mom come? No, I did contact her, but she ignored the read receipt. Oh, I see. She's really a pain sometimes, isn't she? Unpredictable and lacking common sense. Well, yeah. Leela is straightforward, and I've always appreciated that about her. She once told me, if you ever have a problem living with mom, feel free to vent to me. That really saved me, so I used to honestly complain to Leela when things got really tough. Leela understood Jamie's difficult nature, 
so she knew that if she scolded Jamie based on what I told her, Jamie would end up taking it out on me. That's why she wouldn't admonish Jamie unless it was really necessary. At that time, just being able to vent was enough to relieve my stress. I had no idea things would get harder after Nia was born. When I got discharged from the hospital and returned home with Nia, Jamie didn't mention her at all. Hurry up and clean, she said. I couldn't believe it. It was as if she completely ignored Nia's existence. Despite feeling upset, I put Nia in her crib and started cleaning. About five minutes later, Jamie started yelling, Candy, come here. Yes, what is it? That baby is noisy. Do something about her crying. I'm sorry. Again, I couldn't believe it. Referring to her as that baby as if she's a nuisance and telling me to do something about her crying. Jamie continued to treat Nia poorly. The baby is crying. It stinks. Change her diaper now. The crib is in the way. Shut up, baby. Jamie shouted these things each time, and Nia would cry louder in fright, which made Jamie even angrier. It was a very uncomfortable atmosphere for Nia and me. Jamie, her name is Nia. Can you please call her by her name? Shut up. Don't tell me what to do. You're her mother, so it's your job to take care of her. Make sure I'm comfortable. Look, she's crying again. Nicola had started crying because Jamie yelled. I had just put her to bed. I had to stop my chores and go soothe Nicola, and if that delayed the housework, Jamie would get mad about that too. When I put Nicola back to bed and resumed my chores, Jamie said, Ah, this is really in the way, takes up so much space, and kicked the crib. The crib shook, and Nicola woke up crying again. What are you doing, Jamie? Shut up. It's your fault for putting such a big thing here. But it was you who told us to put the bed in the living room because it's noisy when she cries at night in our room. Are you complaining to me now? Stop arguing and sue that noisy child. That noisy child? This person is really the worst. I had no choice but to do my chores while holding Nicola. Trying to balance housework and childcare without angering Jamie was really tough, and I was gradually getting exhausted. If I focused too much on childcare, I'd be scolded for being slow at housework. If I focused on chores, I'd be berated for parenting. Miles was away on a business trip for about two months and wasn't home. I couldn't bear it and tried consulting him over WhatsApp and phone, but he seemed busy and couldn't talk long. He'd apologized many times saying, I'm really sorry for the hard times, but I felt guilty making him apologize when he was working so hard for our family. Then something unbelievable happened. That day, maybe because I was so tired, I fell asleep as soon as I put Nicola in her crib and went to my bedroom. A few hours must have passed when I suddenly woke up to Nicola crying in the night. Still half asleep, I checked the time on my mobile phone. One o'clock a.m. Good thing I got a little nap earlier, I thought, dragging my tired body up, planning to go to the living room to soothe Nicola. Just then, I heard a shouting voice, Shut up! Be quiet! For a moment, I couldn't tell where the voice was coming from. I thought maybe Jamie was yelling from her room, so I said, Yes, I'm coming to soothe her now, and opened the living room door. There, right in front of me, was Jamie, standing over the crib, glaring at Nicola. The next moment, she slapped Nicola's face, shouting, Enough already! What are you doing? I yelled louder than I ever had before. Jamie looked surprised for a second then yelled back, Why didn't you soothe her sooner? She's so noisy, this child. Panicking, I rushed over to the crib and lifted Nicola to protect her from Jamie. I couldn't believe it, hitting a baby. Could this person really be human, hitting a three-month-old baby? Nicola was crying louder than I had ever heard before, and her face had turned red. I immediately called an ambulance. At the hospital, the doctor examined Nicola. He said her face was red, but there was no worry about bruises or injuries, which relieved me. I almost collapsed on the spot. What happened? Did you drop her on the floor or something? The doctor asked. I explained the situation to the doctor. Right then, Leela entered the room. Candy, is Nicola okay? Oh, Leela. In my panic, I had called her. While in the ambulance, I called Leela despite it being the middle of the night since Miles was on a business trip and couldn't come immediately. Leela explained to the doctor about Jamie hitting Nicola. The doctor was speechless and Leela was shaking with anger. The next day, I went home with Leela. I let her enter the house alone to confront Jamie. Jamie acted as if nothing had happened, harassing me as usual. You're late. 
Hurry up and make breakfast. You miss taking out the trash because you came home in the morning. You really can't do housework. Enough already. Did you forget what happened yesterday? You get a three-month-old baby, remember? How can you act so normally? First, apologize for yesterday. Jamie's face turned red with anger. What? Why should I apologize? That child was the noisy one. I just slapped her because she wouldn't listen. It's a part of discipline. I thought she wouldn't be quiet otherwise. That's not discipline. It's just violence. Enough, so noisy. Just do your chores already. Jamie, you don't regret it at all, do you? You don't even think you did anything wrong. Leela, please come in. Leela entered the living room as I called her. Why is Leela here? Mom, what are you doing? I can't believe you did such a thing. No, that's, ah, uh, Jamie was flustered by Leela's arrival. Mom, you do realize that what you did is legally punishable, right? Jamie's face turned pale. Leela, you're not going to sue your own mother, are you? The one who's going to sue is Candiff. I'll just be her lawyer. But wait, it was just a part of her education. Who would agree that hitting a baby is education? This is a case of assault. No matter how much Jamie tried to justify her actions, they could never be excused. I'll definitely sue you. Be prepared, I told Jamie. Jamie began to cry quietly. I'm sorry, Candy. I always lose control when I get angry and end up regretting it later. I've always been depressed and regretful about how I treated you and Nia. I truly am sorry for what happened. Why did I raise my hand to her? I always wanted a boy for the eldest grandson. It was also Willis's wish. Willis's wish? It might be an old-fashioned thought, but we always hoped for a boy to carry on the family line. When a girl was born instead, I was happy about the birth of a granddaughter but also felt like I failed to fulfill a promise to Willis. Every time I got angry, I couldn't control myself. I'm really sorry. Jamie continued speaking through her tears. Please, Candy, change me. I'll do anything. Jamie said this and then deeply apologized. Jamie, please calm down. Let's talk properly first. No, I've done something terrible. No amount of apologies will ever be enough. Jamie kept apologizing repeatedly. I felt my heart wavering and almost forgave her. That's when Leela spoke up. Don't take her seriously, Candy. Mom always pretends to be deeply remorseful like this when she's cornered just to end criticism against her. Huh. She did the same when Dad found out about her affair. He forgave her because he fell for her act, but her tears dried up immediately afterward. This is probably just an act too, right? You can't fool me. Leela's observation made Jamie falter. What are you saying, Leela? Looking closely, Jamie's tears, which were flowing heavily just a moment ago, had already dried up. It was likely fake crying. Jamie, I can't forgive you anymore. How twisted can you be to try to weasel out of what you've done? Wait a minute, I'm not trying to escape anything. Okay, okay, I understand. But we've already decided to take legal action. As I said that, Jamie's face turned red with anger. Don't joke with me. Why should I be subjected to this by a daughter-in-law like you? How insolent. Just then, the sound of the house key turning was heard. Candy, is Nicola safe? Miles asked. Miles, why are you here? I thought he couldn't come since he was on a business trip. I had only contacted him on WhatsApp. I called him several times in the middle of the night, then he drove straight here. Miles had been driving since 3 o'clock a.m. and arrived this morning. I didn't know Miles was coming too. Mom, cut it out. I've been hearing about your harassment from Candy, and I've been warning you every time, haven't I? And now you've gone and hit my precious Nicola. I'll never forgive you for this. Miles, even you're blaming me? How cruel, after I raised you and Leela. What are you talking about? You always left us with Aunt to play around. Our memories are filled with the meals Aunt cooked, not you. Mom, just give it up. Besides, I think the doctor already reported it yesterday. Huh. The hospital knows you hit her so I think it's just a matter of time before the police come. No, wait. You're okay with your mother being arrested. I'd rather not have someone who hits a three-month-old baby around. No matter what you say, Mom, you have no one on your side now. Jamie finally seemed to understand her situation. Pale-faced and slumped, she waited. Soon, the police arrived and Jamie was arrested. As a first-time offender, she received a suspended sentence, 
But Miles and Leela cut ties with her and issued restraining orders. Miles moved out of the in-laws' house with me and Nicola and rented an apartment while looking for a place. We stayed briefly with Leela, which was a great help. Candy, I'm really sorry for everything. I'll take parental leave. If I can't get it, I'll change apartments or even jobs to ensure your and Nicola's safety. I was so happy to hear Miles say that. His company had some issues with the working environment and he couldn't get parental leave, so he resigned and found another job. Now he comes home on time, helps with Nicola and the housework. We live in a high-rise near Leela's family, often gathering for meals or enjoying barbecues. I don't know what's become of Jamie, but I heard from neighbors that after her arrest, she's become completely isolated and doesn't go out anymore. Prideful Jamie probably can't bear being known as someone who did such terrible things. Well, it doesn't matter to me anymore. She doesn't know where we moved, so there's no chance of meeting or her showing up unexpectedly. I plan to live happily, supporting each other as a family with Miles, Nicola, and Leela's family.